Hey everybody, welcome to the final build video of our rock arm series. This is where we're gonna do the final wiring and there was just a few details in here that are just so important to get right. I just wanted to dedicate one video to this alone. So we're doing a few things different here that we might not ordinarily do. I mentioned before that we're gonna be powering these nodes directly off their five volt voltage in rail. Now remember that's unprotected. There is no voltage regulator or anything. It's just going straight into the chipset. So it's super important that you're using a power supply that provides a true five volt regulated clean power. So in my case, I'm using a computer DC to DC power supply. So this is fed by 12 volt DC and it provides a normal connector like you would see on a PC motherboard, but we're not gonna be using that. We're gonna be using some of our pin headers. So I made some custom wiring harnesses and I'll take you through these. It's also important to know that I don't sell or build these for anybody else. I'm just building these for the video. I'm gonna take you through what I've done in here, but beyond that, study closely because you're gonna be on your own to build these. Now, again, I kind of went overkill with the cable braids and things like that, just to make them nice and pretty because we are doing a video here, so I didn't want to just slap it together. So I hope you guys appreciate the extra attention to detail here. So let's start with the main wiring harness and what's in here and what it's doing. Okay, so this is actually being fed from this end here. This goes to our Pico PSU, and this has your standard five volt ground, ground, and 12 volt. So standard wiring, red is five volt, black of course is ground, and yellow is 12 volt. So we need that voltage range, and you'll wanna study whatever power supply you choose, whether it's the Pico PSU or something different, you'll just wanna study and make sure that you get your connectors right. Now, mine, when I bought the Pico PSU itself, it did come with these wiring ends itself, so I, I had to cut these and build my own harness. So this goes into here, and then we'll cover the other one in a moment. Now, inside of here, we're using I tried to follow the color patterns as best we could here. So these four pin headers here, all four of these, these are the ones that are gonna power our four units here, our four compute units. And they are black for ground and red for five volt. So those are wired in accordingly to this input. So traveling down, so that's just the power supply for the compute nodes. Now traveling down, this extra connector here is my fan power supply. Now, I chose to actually power the fan off five volt. It is a 12 volt fan, but I wanted it to run slower and a little quieter, and it's effectively silent, but it still gets plenty of airflow. So I'm actually driving that at five volts. So in this case, although if you look closely, you can see I am using the yellow pin because that is the correct input wire for the fan, it's wired inside this harness to the five volt rail. Now, there's no harm in hooking it to the yellow, to the 12 volt rail, the fan will just run faster and it might make a little noise. If that's not something that bothers you, wire it up 12 volts, that's just fine. But I wanted to run mine at five volts just to run it that much quieter. And then the far end of this connector is what ought to look familiar to you as well. This is kind of a standard old school hard disk Molex connector. And this uses both voltages as well. It uses five volt and 12 volt yellow. This is gonna power our Rock Pi NAS. This is the, the NAS hat. So this particular pin header on our NAS unit, the way this stacks up, this will actually supply power to this Rock Pi unit. So we don't have to drive this one directly by any pin headers. This is actually going in through its proper power supply. So that is what that particular wiring harness is for. And we're gonna step through installing that. And then this other one here, this is power supply for our switch. So this switch, and I'd love to know, please let me know if you find something like this in the comments and I've overlooked it, but this switch is nine volts input, okay? It's not 12 volt, it's not five volt. I wasn't able to find one that was this small and this thin of a footprint that landed either in five volt or in 12 volts. So because of that, I had to take the 12 volt feed off of the auxiliary power output from our Pico PSU. I ran it through, I just have it shrink wrap, but I, I ran it through a voltage reducer. Now these are a really common little electronics doodad 
Uh, they have common voltages that you can just do solder pads across to, and they also have a little pot that you can adjust if you want to really closely dial in what the output voltage is, which is what I chose to do. I have links to all this down in the description. So that's all this is doing. This is taking 12 volt, dropping it down to nine volt, and then I just reuse the existing plug, soldered that on so that it can supply power straight into that switch and run cleanly. So I haven't had any trouble with any of this. It's all working terrific. So with that explanation, why don't we dive into it? Let's get this wired up. I'll show you how it goes and I'll show you exactly where we're connecting to, especially over here. This is the super, super important part that we don't mess up that wiring because one reverse polarity or wrong pin header and you could easily fry one of these in, in just a second so we don't want that to happen let's start with the large wiring harness first and this guy in my case is going into this pin header on the right and again you'll just want to make sure for whatever power supply you're using that that is correct that you're using the right headers here and then i'm going to use these ones that i ran a little bit longer i'm going to fish these through over to the other side to power these two far units. So go ahead and fish those through as best you can. Give them a nice clean clear pathway through. It might take a little bit of work and once you get that all fished in there nicely and you got the links right so that you can reach your pin headers on either side, let's get those plugged in. So let's take a look on the far side just to start here. And if you take a close look, it's going to be hard to see on the video itself. But down here, the Rock Pies are actually a little bit better as far as color coding their pin headers. With the Raspberry Pies, there's no color coding on there, so you don't get any help. But the thing to know, please double check and triple check the schematics for your specific board. Just in case you're watching this video at some point down the road, maybe this pinout has changed. I certainly hope it hasn't, but make sure that this is correct. The way this is oriented, on the top right, there is two red, which are positive, those are voltage in, and immediately followed by the third pin being ground, okay? So we're gonna use that pin two and pin three on the far right down to connect our connector. Now, I've said this a million times, but please, I can't reiterate it enough. It's super important to know that this input power here is not in any way protected against a switch polarity or over voltage or anything like that. So if you connect this wrong, do expect that you will fry your board and you don't want that. So with that said, let's go ahead and get that connected. So I'm going on pin two and three on the far right side, skipping the first pin, okay? Hard to see on here, I know, but try to follow along. So that's gonna be your positive in and your ground. And then we'll do the same for all the other nodes. So this one here, same thing. I've got my five volts and my ground. I'm gonna go two and three, skipping that top pin on the far right side. And that's gonna supply power directly into these nodes. This is again, a regulated five volts coming in. Okay, let's do the same on this side. We're gonna go ahead and run these over. This might be a little easier to see, it's hard to tell. But again, that's gonna be on the bottom. And since my orientation has shifted, that's on the left, but that's positive and then ground. Okay, with our fourth node, there we go. So once you've got those all plugged in, double, triple, check it five times. Make sure you've got those plugged into the right pins before you have anything plugged in or powered up. So that's gonna supply power to all four nodes. Next, let's get the power for that switch installed. So this is going to be this other pin header for me. Make sure it's the right one for you. That's gonna supply 12 volt that I'm reducing down to nine volt to feed into the switch. So for this guy, I'm just gonna tuck this little shrink wrap doodad into there. I'm gonna wrap my cable up in here and lay it there for the moment. And then our switch is going to go right there. Go ahead and line up on those two little standoffs that we created and set these screws down, not too tight. Again, remember, you're going into 3D printed plastic. You don't want to over tighten them, but they're plenty strong enough to hold the switch in place. And then this is our nine volts in for the switch. So we'll make sure we have enough slack, get that guy plugged in. Okay, so we've got our nodes, four nodes, power supply for those. And then we have our last remaining connectors. So let's go ahead and take this top node here and we want to position the fan facing backwards or to your right depending on your orientation here go ahead and get that guy in and I'm just gonna sneak this cable down in here now I'm not tightening anything up quite yet 
I just want to see the cable routing and that my cable links are correct. So this is the uh, fan from the Noctua. Uh, I've got that guy going here. I just decided to use it, reuse its connector. I think it's a good connector. This is going to route up and over to go into our storage node. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Now, I wanna go ahead and get some network cables going in here before things get too tight for me to reach them. So let's pull, let's back this out for a moment. Get this guy out of the way. So our network cables, I really like these. I've got links to all these down in the description. These are terrific. So they are, they're about 12 inches. These are gonna be the ones that need to go up and over. So let's get these wired in. So let's start at our baseline. Let's get our connector. So this is our, connector that goes out. This is our actual incoming ethernet connection that goes to your switch outside of this unit. Snap that guy in and then get that into, I prefer to put that in the bottom most port in our switch there. So you get something looking about like that. Okay. So this one here is my node number one. Let's get that guy in to port one and node two right here going into port two. Great. Okay, with the first two nodes wired up, let's go ahead and get this guy in place. Again, we want to make sure we have the fan this way, basically facing towards the outbound Ethernet port and the power connector. And just to keep things stable, let's go ahead and get these screws in to hold the duct on. Remember, that's just two on each side. Okay. Let's go ahead and get everything else routed over to the other side. Node number three there, and node number four there. And the fifth one will be for our NAS node. So let's go check out that side to squeeze these in. Kind of a tight fit, it's not too bad though. So node number three there. Okay, node number four. Okay, just make sure those are routed cleanly. No issues there. Okay. And then our fifth one, again, is our, our NAS node. Okay, so just go through those, make sure everything looks good. They're routed cleanly, you don't have too much pressure on any of the wires. That one's old type, but not bad. And then our final connections here, we're gonna route up and over again. Let's go ahead and turn it this way to make it a little easier. We've got our fan connector, it's this guy here. And then this guy here, this is the one that powers the NAS, so that's the end of our main wiring harness. Okay. So that's all the wiring. Now we need to get the hard disks in place. So let's take a look at those. Now I've already got the two drives I'm using here mounted up on their right side plane here. So you go ahead and screw that on and then that way this little tab can just insert into the housing there. So before we do that, I wanna talk about the connectors. So these guys here, I've got two of these. These are about 12 inch as well and these are a uh, SATA and power in one connector and one end has a 90 degree and the other one is a straight through. So I've got links to these down in the description as well, but these are really handy. So the, uh, the straight through end goes on the uh, hard disk side. Get those snapped in first. Okay, so we'll go and wire those up here. And remember, I'm only using two connectors, so I'm kind of using the far one and then this one here. That way I've got enough length between the two uh, to keep them from having any excess pressure on the connectors themselves. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then we can still kind of tuck that down in that channel there. Okay, so that's what that looks like. I'm gonna turn it sideways, you can get a better view of what that looks like. Okay, so the last step here will be to just get the hard disks themselves mounted in. So on the right side here, just get that tab pressed down in there. It just takes a little bit of pressure to get that down into that base plate. Yeah, that's pretty good and then most of the weight will be supported by the screws on the right side here. Looking good, okay. So that is the fully assembled unit. We've got everything wired up and plugged in and got our power supply kind of tucked in here. Because these Pico PSUs, they don't have like any mounting holes or standoffs or anything like that. There's not really a good way to mount these. So uh, I'm definitely open to some suggestions. But for now, I just kind of have it floating in this space here. It's not touching anything. It's not really at risk of coming in contact with anything metal. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with that. I would like to have something a little bit better in the future, but I think this is a good place to leave it for now. So with that, um, we just want to make sure that the lid actually fits. That would be important. So this guy here, 
should just slide right on down, making sure our pathways are clear all the way down, cables tucked on in, and there we go. So, and then the final step, when you're ready to, when you've already power tested it and all that kind of stuff, and you've got the OS loader on it, which we haven't done yet, uh, but the final step will be to turn the unit all the way over, and then we've got uh, four more screws that are going here. So there we go, and that's how the unit gets all sealed up. I also went ahead and added some of these little silicone feet that you can get. So there we go, that's it right there. We've got our entire unit all fully assembled. The exterior is nice and clean. We've got just enough of an air gap on the bottom there for our external airflow all the way around. Network port and DC 12 volt in to power the whole unit. So now we have it assembled, we're ready to power test it. And after that, of course, we're gonna to wanna to load the operating system on here. So that is, of course, a whole nother project. And we'll step through that as well. So guys, this is a good place to finish today. If you've enjoyed this video, if you're not already, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, that certainly helps me out a lot. I'd love to hear in the comments what you think, how your build is going. I'm excited to keep this project going, get you a nice, powerful, ARM-based, low-powered machine in your lab. I think this is a great machine. So guys, this is a fun project. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next one.